What's up party animals? My name is Kezzy and it's been a minute since I've done a video like this. Holy crap, back to back to back freaking festivals has beat me down, dude. So I have, whew, this has been a wild week. Um, if you haven't already, check out my videos for Base Canyon and Foam Wonderland. They were absolutely amazing events. Um, totally super supportive of me being a furry and it was just it was magical um i've been to a couple furry cons but festivals hands down slap harder just they do it's it's hard to explain like i got more hugs at the freaking base canyon than i did ever at a furry con so but i haven't gone to a furry con in fursuit so catch me at blfc catch me at mff i'm gonna be at anthro northwest and upcoming in about one month i'm going to be on wonderland so hit me up if you're going otherwise let's get on with the video uh one of the youtubers that i watch that's actually not a furry is audio pills and he does a show called bad gear and it is probably my favorite series on youtube right now just because it's so consistent he does uh, he's doing stuff that no other YouTuber does. So if you're interested in like just like the the the, the magical world of electronic music equipment and all of the downsides they can have, check him out on Audio Pills. Uh, links in the description and all that. But one thing that he did was he started talking crap about this guy. This is the Akai MPX8, and I got it a while ago, and I actually made a video about it. And personally, I think it's actually really good. This device is really powerful for what it is. Um, it's only a sample player, so there's no recording samples. There's only putting them on an SD card and hitting play. It doesn't have choke groups. It doesn't have pretty much any features. It, and, that, and that was what Audio Pills was saying, was like, this thing has no features. It is absolutely crap. And to a point, I agree. But I think, I think he and a lot of people really missed the absolute power that this thing has. Because it isn't an MPC, it's an MPX. It can play samples. And for a hundred bucks, you're getting to play pretty much any sample. Um, a lot of people had trouble with using with uh, loading in the sa loading in samples. I use a free program called Audacity, and it works perfectly. I just export a mono wave file, and it it just works every time. So, I would recommend using Audacity. Apparently, the um, OEM program doesn't work well, but I think that is. Honestly, I, one thing I will agree with, Akai dropped the ball on this. This thing could have been so much better and it just so wasn't. And it's a real shame too, because this thing has so much potential. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I have uh, loaded up a few samples onto the pads. And let me make sure I've saved it because I have to turn it off. Is I'm gonna set this thing up off camera. It's 80 degrees outside. I'm cooking. I hate this. Like honestly, going to like a festival and sweating my ass off, totally fine. But when I'm in the studio, it sucks. I hate being wet in the studio because this is all electronics. Like when I'm wet at the base canyon, you know, I'm just in a field like i don't really care it's dirty dog fine but dirty dog in the studio uh-uh i ain't about that life and yesterday no two days ago it was like in the low 60s today it's in the high 80s ah i want to make a video without cooking all right so what i've been doing is i've been working on making the um sounds so i have the mpx8 all set up right here and I have a few sounds on it. And the cool thing that you can do is I've used a program called Vital to play. So, so you don't even need a DAW for this because of the way Vital works. So I have Vital generating sound and then I pump that sound from Vital into Audacity to record it and then export it as a WAV file. And then I plug that into this Bam, sampler, right there, ready to go. The thing's dope. Um, so let me give you a rundown of what the samples are. Yeah. 
You shouldn't do that. Can you turn the bass down? So, uh, a couple of these sounds are from Spice, um, mostly any of the percussions and vocals, but all the real growly, grrr, angry dog sounds um, are from me. Now, one thing that you can also do is because I'm using Splice, you can just take Splice sounds, load it onto an SD card, and build your own kits that way. There's really nothing stopping you from performing this in any way you want, other than a maximum of eight sounds. But if you're clever, one thing that I've found is that, so this sound right here, I actually have it so that it's a two-part sound. So I can play it. See? So I can do that like really, really aggressive sound, but then it has that like pull back once I release the note. So let's go ahead and I will show you um, the power of this thing. Now, if someone was doing this and they were actually better than me, uh, that would go a long way. I'm not the best. I don't make the best sounds. I don't do the best finger drumming, but I figured that this would give a good... I really wanted to push this thing as hard as it can go. Something that really knocks your brain out of its skull and causes a freaking mosh pit because this thing honestly slaps so hard. So let's give some grooves going. Can you turn the bass down? You should Can you can you can you can you turn You should Can you turn the bass down? So something like that. You can get pretty freaking wild with this thing. And I've only kind of really spent like an hour practicing with the kit I just built. So I haven't gotten the whole thing down yet, if that makes a lot of sense. Um, but I really wanted to say, hey, this thing actually slaps way harder than it might at first seem. So one of the things that I really wanted to kind of focus on is after Bass Canyon, I have been obsessed with trying to make dubstep. And even beforehand, I haven't really been good at making those aggressive growls. And now that I'm kind of like, I'm honestly impressed. These sounds have been made by me. So I'm pretty happy with myself for that. Um, one of the secrets I'm using, check out my cropped YIF to dropped bass video. Um, I'm using a bunch of stuff I've downloaded from E621 and just throwing it into uh, Serum. I have Serum, but I'm throwing it into Serum, converting it into a wavetable, and then I can use those in uh, Vital or Serum or even my... Uh, uh, Polyan Tracker. If you check my Twitter or Instagram or whatever, um, I'm actually working on the wavetable system on that and making some bangers. So I have been obsessed with trying to make dubstep wubs and I'm getting the hang of it. And now it's kind of how do I make a dubstep song? Because that is the more, that, that's a lot more confusing. But that's not what this video is about. Uh, this video is about like, hey, the MPX-8 is actually really, really freaking cool. Um, I love the thing. What I can do with it is actually, now that I have this kind of kit set up in my studio, I can take that thing, toss it in a bag with a little power brick, and perform anywhere. As long as I have a pair of headphones, I can jam the hell out of that thing and really kind of learn 
how to do the rhythm. It's, it's honestly, it's not the best performance tool. If I was going to do something like this, I would definitely use a completely different tool if I was going to be like on stage at a festival or even at a furry con. I would be using a completely different tool entirely. There's definitely better things out there, but all things considered, for the price point that this is, it is a beautiful practice device for getting experiments and ideas out there and really getting a feel for finger drumming and rhythm. So, yeah, uh, that's the video. Go check out my festival vlogs. Go check out my Patreon. Go check out all of my crap. I have tons of it. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye!